Make a motion to uh, accept Patty from Pomfret. Second. So we have a motion for Patty. Sorry, we're nominating for chair. For chair. For chair. Yep. Yeah. Nominate Louis. Second. We have a nomination for Lou. For chair. Any other nominations? We have a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too. Mm -hmm. Rena, did you get a second? Ben. I'm sorry. So we have two candidates for the position of chair. Motion to close it. Motion. Second. So do we vote? So we'll make a vote by hand. So we see. Sure. Yep. Okay. Yes, would it be great to hear from the candidates? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. It's that political science. Thing. I know. Thank you. So, Pam, you were nominated first. <coughs> oh, I'm not sorry. Surprise! Okay, stop quickly. Um, well, thank you for the nomination. This was, um, I'm sure, a surprise for many people. Um, Pam came as a surprise to me. Um, and I probably don't see maybe may the perfect choice for this position. Um, but a couple people whose opinions I really value and um, who I care deeply about approached me and asked me if I would take this responsibility on. And um, yeah, out of respect for them, I said, yes, I would, because I, it wasn't something that I thought um, I was going to put myself up for myself. But um, with the confidence of other people, I thought I'd be comfortable doing that. Um, I don't have an educational background in terms of um, bringing that forward to the school board. I don't have a strong you know, organizational um, committee or corporate background um, to bring to the school board. But I, I try to think what I do have to offer when people came to me and asked me, would I do this? And I do think I have a lot to offer. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I was a veterinarian by profession for 20 years, um, and between that and being a mother, those are the two most critically important things in my life. Um, and I think my career as a veterinarian taught me a lot of things. Um, it was a career that I planned for for my whole life, um, so there was the commitment to do that. It's also a career of um, great compassion, great empathy, great listening to um, both clients and to the patients who really can't talk to me. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, thinking on a minute's notice and making life or death situation, you know, um, dealing with life or death situations and life or death decisions and making them as well as dealing with long-term management issues. And in my case, I was fortunate enough that it led to me um, owning my own business for um, 10 of the 20 years that I practiced with a staff of um, almost 30 people, um, knowing fully well that none of what I did, I did by myself. I did it with the support of my husband, and I did it with the support of a tremendously talented support staff. Um, we ultimately moved to this area because I wanted to raise my daughter in, um, an idyllic place. I wanted her to have a better education than she could have had where she was, and I wanted her to have a better life um, than she could have had. And um, 
that's why we're here. And I know when I was asked to originally be on the Pomfret board, um, and then when I came to the first unified district board meeting, you know, I'm not a politician. I am, I consider myself an advocate. And my role as board chair would be, first of all, to listen, to observe, to research, um, to advocate first and foremost for the students of this district, for the taxpayers of this district, for the educators of this district. Um, and I think I'm ready to do that. I think my experience on this board in the committees that I've been on and in the committees that I've attended just to get myself better educated, I think I'm ready to um, address a lot of the hard stuff that we've got going forward and address it in a, um, a humble and a compassionate um, and dedicated way. My turn? Good. Um, well, first off, Patty, thank you. I, you know, I respect you immensely. You know that we work together now. Um, you know, I, I came to Woodstock now six years ago. My wife grew up here, and uh, I've been involved in education most of my adult life. Started a company in the educational technology space. I've had the privilege of visiting, I would say, thousands of schools. I've also had the privilege of having five kids in Woodstock schools, two of which have since graduated and moved on to college. Um, I would agree with Patty and say that we have real big challenges in front of us. And you know, as board chair, my focus will be on the process that we follow. I don't believe that the board chair should directly advocate for a position, but the board chair should really enforce process and how the board runs. I think that is absolutely paramount to making sure everybody's interests are represented. Um, you know, the board chair, of course, votes their 118th position, as we, as we see here. But you know, my core belief in how boards are run, run is that the process really does matter. And you know, this board has gone through an amazing amount. I mean, coming together from a, uh, you know, different towns and trying to bring together an entire district is a very challenging thing to do. Um, and I think that what's been accomplished before us you know, has been uh, truly amazing and that we have a lot to do going forward. And there's a lot that we can do to help Woodstock to help all the associated towns, to help Windsor Central move on to the next level of what this district might look like. So the reason I put my name in is because I am a believer in public education. I think it's of paramount importance. Um, it is the core of you know, what we do, what we do within our society. And so I thought now was the time to step forward and to hopefully offer some of the experience that I have coming from a school district in Pennsylvania where I was actually recruited onto the board by the president of the National School Boards Association who said, you should do this. And so I've been doing it ever since, four years on that board and now three years here. And um, my belief is that what I can bring to the table is making sure that the way that we do things is the appropriate way for a board so that everybody is represented and heard. Thank you. I would request a paper ballot. Okay. You can request it, just mean we have paper for it. <laughs> 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 Things are really tight right now. <laughs> He's such a clerk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just take that stack of paper. You still have to Thank come you. and hang around. <laughs>
Oh, wait. Okay. She's coming. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, you're dangerous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Still get to go to Vermont toes out. Yeah. Right. So we did the count for now. Right. So Patty, you are turn to check. Hey, I'm good. No, it's all good. Pitchfield loves this. There's no issues here. So do we move up? Who's the chair? So Patty is the chair. Okay. I make a motion to make Bryce from Barnett the vice chair. Second. Wait, no, wait. So the board chair should be fa facilitating this conversation. Do you have the agenda? Yeah. So this is not Jim's position. This is now Patty. Your position as, ch as chair okay. Okay. is to move the agenda forward. Okay. So we had a motion from the vice Jim. chair, Jim. From Jim. For Bryce. Jim. For Bryce. For Bryce. For Bryce. Yeah. Are there any other? Well, I'll nominate Lou. I so decline the nomination. You do. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close nominations. Second. If there's such a thing. All in favor? Closing nominations? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So. Need an all in favor? How do you need to take oh, okay. um, All in favor of Bryce says. I wanted to hear a speech. Oh. <laughs> I can, I can give a small speech. I don't want to take up too much time, but <clears throat> um, having been on the Barnard School Board and now on this board for the last couple of years, I have uh, a child here at the Middle High School, one in Barnard Elementary, and I have a two-year-old. So um, besides caring for everyone's children, I have a personal vested interest as well, and I plan to stick around for a while. Um, I've been on numerous boards uh, before this to some other nonprofits, the Tunbridge World's Fair as a director for a few years. Um, so I'm really hoping that, for me, that we can get uh, just or organization for me, making sure we're making the most of our time is what's really important to me so we can hopefully uh, accomplish more for these short couple times a month that we have to meet together. Um, and I think we have a good group of people here that can do that. Any further discussion? Okay. All favor, all in favor of vice chair, as vice chair? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Vice. And then clerk is already. Is that the same as the, like, no. no. Is it, oh, this this is board clerk and district clerk, two entirely separate positions. Are you our clerk now? No, I am your recording secretary. <laughs> Who's the clerk now? Tim. Tim. Was. Tim was both clerk. He was both right. clerk for the district. That's normally who takes it. <laughs> Basically, a clerk's job on the board is to be record keeper of all board business. That is mostly done out of our office. Your recording secretary takes care of all of that for you. When I leave on an executive session, the clerk would take the minutes. If I'm sick and can't be here, the clerk would take the minutes. That's relatively your Well, I just thought Tim job. did that because he was going to see you tonight. <laughs> 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 I got gotcha. Not a job to do. <laughs> Are there any motions for the officer of clerk? I'll make a motion for Ben Ford since he's already the other clerk. Yeah, I didn't realize the full extent of the board clerk's duties. I decline. Okay. Do we have any other nominations? I'm willing to do it. I'll make a motion for Jennifer and Antoni from Killington to be the board clerk. Yeah. Any discussion? 
any other nominations? Close the nominations. Second. All in favor of Jennifer for clerk? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, Jennifer. Are there any amendments to the agenda? I would like to add an executive session for personnel at the end of the meeting, please. Okay. I would like to move item number six to be uh, my item number four, since there seems to be a lot of community here, and I don't know if they're going to be here for this whole meeting. So. I'll second that, if it needs a second. All in favor of moving the executive session up before the further? Uh, no, community mm -hmm. engagement. For a community yeah. engagement up before the board operations discussions and decisions. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Can we, uh, oh, sure. Chair, Chair Lady, mm -hmm. can we find out who our new rep is over on the other side of the table? Please. Speech. My Enjoy. name is Anna. I am a Reading resident and a new chair board member for uh, Reading. I have a seven year old at Reading Elementary School and I've been uh, pretty frequently attending meetings but on the other side of the, the tables out in the peanut gallery. So thanks for having me. Well, thank you. Um, so, public, any comments or discussion? I'll go first. Yes, Bob. Hi, I'm Bob Crane from Pomfret. I got a short letter. I would like to see this board, the new board, resolve a few things, three things. Number one, have the board meetings here in the library, not over at the WCSU. There's hardly room for all of you 18 folks plus staff, let alone the public. So that's number one. Number two, resolve to arrange the tables in a V or semicircle the way they've been for years so that the community, as well as chap um, Channel 8, if they're here, can see everybody. Also, the chair should be front and center so that the chair can hear and see everybody and also see the community. I think putting the tables in a circle or a square, some with backs to the public, the way things were at WCSU might send the wrong impression to the public. And number three, while the public comment period at the beginning of each meeting is a good idea and should be maintained, please resolve to do away completely with the recent procedure of disallowing comments from the community when agenda items are discussed. These are our meetings, not yours alone, and if community members are passionate enough about an issue to show up, they ought to be heard. It's a large board, we get that, but eliminating repetitive comments from board members, sometimes even without motions on the floor, would probably provide ample time for everybody to be heard. Not allowing the community to speak turns the notion of public meetings on its head. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. Madam Chair, I brought this up before. I per personally, because I can't hear quite everything that is said, would like a microphone on that table, on that table, on all of your tables, so that we could at least hear you like down at the town meeting, they had uh, two microphones, which they all shared, and we could uh, understand, and when they were speaking, they would, that's what I would like to see. And I, I'll also go along with his suggestion, and like tonight, I would like to know who is on the bo on this board? And they should go around and at least state their name and in what town they're supposed to be. And the town should be maybe should be on the table. Thank you. I'm going to say to facilitate that for you tonight, sir. Could everyone just could we just go around the table? Sure. I'm Bob Coates, Pomfret. Ray Rice Pittsfield. Melina Egan, Woodstock. 
Patty Kosmikas Pomfret. Morgan Sailor Clement. Matthew Huff from Bridgewater. Pamela Fraser Barnard. Ben Ford, Woodstock. Louis McCanny, Woodstock. Bryce Samuel Barnard. Jen Flaster, Plymouth. Sherry Susan from the SU. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Yen and Tony Killington. Claire Dubeco, Woodstock. Sam Di Natale, Woodstock. Adam Emily from Reading. Anna Sessa, still from Reading. Jim mm -hmm. Half from Killington. Thank you. I have one question on one of Matt's. Um, I know when we do our select board meetings, Peg TV does it, and Peg TV usually sets up the microphones. Is this company able to do that? We're not Peg TV, but um, I'm, I'm, uh, but yeah, we don't have amplified mics. We just have mics that go back to our camera. Okay. But I can talk to you Thank you. Okay. Any additional? Yes. Um. Actually, make some copies. So I'm Corinne Park from Barnard, Chair of the Barnard Board. So this is to the Unified District Board on behalf of Barnard voters following on town meeting day discussions. So the FY21 budget passed, but relatively narrowly. The 18, 1677 to 1216 vote reflects a lack of confidence in the financial management of Unified District funds and frustration with the opacity of the budget development process. But generously, it also reflects a tentative trust in board representatives to spearhead the work towards change. Specific failures raised by voters at Barnard Town Meeting include paltry unified district budget information in the Vermont Standard, lack of audited info on prior year expenditures, and a Barnard treasurer who cannot get access to current account information from central office. Collectively, the Barnard voters have supported a full merge with the unified district but it comes with the expectation that the board will provide heightened oversight of central office management of our tax dollars and increased transparency of the budget process. Fiscal responsibility requires transparency and accountability. Our expectation for transparency is that complete budget information will be published in a timely fashion, respecting the ability of the constituency to analyze and grapple with complexity, uncertainty, and trade-offs. Our expectation regarding accountability is that both successes and failures will be communicated to the public in a timely manner, and the judgment of the community will be accepted for the decisions that were made. There will be trust that the public will understand occasional human error, but expect timely reparation and corrective action. Trust and respect can only be mutual. Our trust and respect for the board and for the district administration requires meaningful transparency and accountability. It requires trust and respect for the people of our towns. Specifically, Barnard voters would like to see a public announcement of what's been going on in central office regarding finances, an acknowledgement that the finances distributed before the budget vote were inadequate, a timeline as to when FY19 audits expect to be completed, published in the paper of record of the SU, and distributed to the various town offices and elementary schools a review of the audit engagement letter and analysis of additional steps needed to ensure the robustness of systems of accounting and financial management across the district. A policy outlining how the financial reports and budget numbers will be distributed to the general public in the future to include more extensive reporting requirements. A policy outlining the role of the Director of Finance and Operations will play in reporting directly to the board, such as through monthly reports on which the board must vote to accept. Measures such as these are necessary to cultivate trust, transparency, and inclusion across towns and stakeholders, which is goal seven of the published WCSU strategic plan. Barnard, for one, expects no less. And we have a number of signatures on it. Thank you. Additional comment? Yes. Hi, I'm Amelia Lennon, also from Barnard, and I just wanted to kind of add on to that, that one way that could be a possible solution for transparency and accountability is to involve expediting the fulfillment of Article 17 of the merger articles of agreement, uh, something whose due date is almost two years past. And I'll just reread Article 17, which is regarding communi community engagement and input. For each operating school within the new unified district, the new unified district board shall provide opportunity for local input 
structures to support, encourage, and recognize the local participation of advisory groups created by and located within the forming communities shall be established by the new Unified District Board on or before July 1st, 2018. Local input will be advisory. The new Unified District Board may create strategies for local participation at each school and may develop procedures to receive input from each school in or town. These formal structures are meant to be part of the communication and advisory conduit to central decision making that townspeople once found with their local board. Um, and this is especially, of course, important to Barnard where we have now just or will be joining the Unified uh, District. Oh, in. Well, we're in, but July 1st. <laughs> They would arguably allow communities a platform to engage formally and regularly with their board representatives, connect with each other across communities on issues on common interests, and um, proactively engage with the unified board rather than having only undervalued time during public comment to respond to issues that have already become reactive. So note that a district-wide parent group managed by central administration will not fulfill the mandate of Article 17. The councils must be organized and energized locally in a way that can adequately represent individual town interests. And hopefully that could also be a big help to all of you where your time is so stretched thin. That's a lot, and you all recognize you have a lot to accomplish in this short time period. So thank you. Could you give a copy of that to Raina? Yeah, to, to Raina. To Raina. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Julie DuPont Plymouth, I wanted to thank you all. I'm glad to see that on your agenda you do have uh, a review of the Code of Ethics and the Roberts Rules of Order uh, item I may have brought up at our last meeting. But I also wanted to make a comment about the minutes that you haven't approved yet from February 24th because I did not see my accompanying documents in the package. Um, talks about public comment was heard on asking the board to reconsider their decision to reduce an administrator position from the Woodstock High School Middle School. And more specifically, it was the data that was used and the safety of our students. And basically, it was a review of the use of executive session. So hopefully that can be modified later. And I would like to see my documents part of the official minutes, because I didn't see them there. Thank you. Yes. Hey, hi. My name is Chet Hagebarth. I'm the town manager in Killington. As you know, the voters in the town of Killington defeated the proposed budget, 239 to 112. Um, many voters stated that, and we had 51 uh, leave the ballots blank. Uh, many of the voters stated that they left the budget articles blank because they did not have enough information to make an informed decision. The budget article failed in Killington for two reasons. First, information presented at the informational re meeting by Jim Half stated that the school district did not have completed audits for 2018 and 19, um, as reported by the school staff. Therefore, does not know its fund ballots, which all indications lead to one to believe that they will be negative, along with the fact that the board does not have a, an approved line item budget at this time. Um, and the one shown on the website still includes items to be removed slash changed as required by the board. And second, it did represent an eight and a half cent increase uh, in the town of Killington. Subsequently, the Finance Committee had a meeting on March 4th with R.H.R. Smith, the auditor uh, for the school district, to get an update on the status of the audits and the fund balance. The auditor stated that the, actually the fiscal year 2018 audit was completed 15 months prior, um, but had not been signed, and modifications in journal entries had not been, been made in the system. Uh, per the auditor, the 2019 budget assumed a carryover balance of approximately $350,000, which was, they're saying they're still trying to verify all of that because they don't know um, what, the, what the balances are. The school district exceeded expenses by approximately $900,000, according to the auditor, which considering the planned usage of the carryover results in a fiscal year 2019 deficit of around $550,000. Depending on upcoming fund allocations being performed by the auditor. The auditor projected a negative fund balance range of $200,000 to $700,000 in the red for fiscal year 2019. This does not take into account the probable budget deficit for the current fiscal year. Based upon the results of the meeting with the auditor, the information provided to the voters of Killington was accurate and created a significant amount of concern. The town is very concerned about the methods available to correct the situation. The auditor brought up that the that the towns could be all sent a bill proportionate to what they what they have 
Um, the town of Killington would not be amenable to receiving a bill for their portion of the deficit from the district as the town has spent the last couple of years correcting fund balances to pre-Irene levels. In addition, any increase in budgeted revenue to close this gap would likely result in becoming a penalty phase item. Therefore, the town of Killington strongly recommends that the Windsor Central Modified Union District freeze all unnecessary spending at this time. In addition, knowing that there's only a two-year window for replenishing the fund balance by statute, um, assuming the school district does it within their system, the school district will utilize the approved spending amount and create a new line item budget for fiscal year 21 with the, with the goal of saving the first $300,000 of the likely deficit in the first year. <clears throat> we believe this can easily be accomplished by eliminating all unnecessary programs, spending along with corrections to existing programs. Examples, I mean, there's a there's multitude of examples, and I don't want to get into specifics at this time, but I know we've had enormous losses in the, in the, the food service issue. We had $400,000 in losses in food service alone. So there are many different options. We are not commenting on the quality of any programs, but given the financial condition of the district and the lack of capital funding, the school district needs to consider only required functions and programs and build a ground up budget that provides for required education, facilities maintenance, and capital improvements to ensure the long term success of the district. Thank you. Could you submit a copy of that to Raina if you have an additional copy, please? Thank you. She's going to get all the stuff I didn't need. Any additional public comment? I'm Roger Rivera from Killington. I also attended the Finance Committee meeting on Wednesday, March 4th for a preliminary report from the auditor on the fiscal year 2019. The news wasn't good. A $900,000 deficit was announced. In this meeting, Mary Beth, our superintendent, stated that previous years the boards had been spending down reserves. Yes, this is true, because previous boards, both high school, middle school, and some elementary boards, were producing responsible budgets that resulted in some surplus, which were then used to offset a capital project or create reserves for an unexpected or unbudgeted expense. Sometimes these surpluses were used to lower tax rates. The superintendent also stated that the deficit was a result of, and I quote, bad math. Well, the taxpayers of this district, this district deserve better than that from someone who oversees a $21 million budget, larger than the combined budget of the municipal towns that attend this district. I look forward to seeing the final audit and hope it sheds some true light as to where the mismanagement occurred. Thank you. Roger Rivera. Any additional public comment? By the way, that audit will be prepared to be done on March 23rd. Anybody who didn't attend that meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Patty? Yes. Excuse me. I'm, I should have done this under amendments to the agenda um, above. Is there a spot uh, during the meeting where I could give a report from the Finance Committee? Um. <coughs> you can put me under J, you know. Yeah, we can do that. Sure. Okay, next. I'll make a motion to accept Jennifer's motion to amend the amended agenda. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, the next matter of business on the agenda is board operations, discussions, and decisions. Um, a is discussion of board norms and procedures. Could, could I make a motion to move 4A through D to table them until the meeting on the 23rd and just continue with the normal board configuration? I will second Thanks. that since we really don't have this agenda. I'm not sure yeah. how do you are not prepared for this. Do we have to adopt a meeting schedule at this meeting? I think so. Raina? It's a norm. I don't know if it's a requirement, but it should be A through F not A through D because E and F are included right. on this meeting schedule. Hold it. I'll accept that. Yep. If you accept it. Yep. A motion to accept the amended. 
I, I'm, Bryce made the motion Your to accept it, and I second it. How do we have a proposed um, schedule that for you been modified in terms of we've gone from meeting twice a month to once a month again? Am I looking at that wrong? No, it's, and there's been a time change on it as well. Um, my guess is there had been some discussion um, you know, prior to the meeting with what the anticipated outcome um, was going to be, and so some decisions were potentially brought forward. Um, so in that, this is, um, as has been said, kind of sprung upon me. Um, I'm going to need some time to back, go over those things and confer with Mary Beth and with Bryce and bring those back to the table for you guys. And just as a matter of process, is that a decision that's made that the board votes on, or is that some is this calendar typically set by okay. chairs or superintendent? I think the recommendation is made, but then I think we ultimately vote as a board to okay. decide. So if we can discuss <coughs> further then after you've had time, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I want to know why we're, why it got changed to seven. Yeah, I I do not I, have I the information to answer that, that question. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that at least our next meeting is one tonight for our regular schedule two weeks from now at 6 p.m. like normal. Mm -hmm. You already have an open motion. You already have, you already have an open motion on the floor. You should take care of it before you take it. So the, the motion on the floor is to amend table A, table. Table. A through F, A through F um, till the next meeting. Any further discussion on that motion? Why do we have to table E and F? I mean, those are because it's a part of. Right. They, have have to all, they have to all be together. Because Rand said so. Easier. Okay. Like all one to do it okay. All okay. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? No, I'm not opposing. Pardon me. <laughs> no, you gotta wait. She's gotta wait next time. <laughs> This is what it's going to be like. <laughs> um, is there, um, and I don't know, I mean, you're just, there's this. You haven't had any notice of this, but do you want any input from people as you, you know, I mean, we're, the time we're discussing, I mean, I, you know, do you want to sort of get an idea from people what the time they're interested in, just to get a straw poll to see? Yeah, most certainly people have a strong feeling about it. I mean, any of these things, I think the, um, the schedule talks about changing you know, the structure of our meetings, um, you know, from, you know, general board business on one day and then committee meetings as an entirely separate thing, taking the committee discussions um, out of the general board meeting. Um, there is also going to be some discussions, I think, about which committees are going to stay intact and, um, and which ones are going to go forward and some of the um, distribution of people on those committees. Um, again, this um, information, you know, my being here is um, is brand new for today, so I have got to educate myself on where this all came from, um, and, you know, we can bring it back, but if people have any of this that they have read through and they want to discuss it now, now would probably be the time to get the feel of where the board is at. Right. Um, I do think without Mary Beth here, it's, it's hard it's to hard. do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I would be in support of going back to one full board meeting a month. Um, I actually have vocally said before that I actually feel like the committee meetings are a better place for public to have more time to speak up. A lot of times in that setting, you're talking about very specific topics related to something, and I feel like there's more time. And so I feel like if committee meetings were in the evenings when public had an easier time at attending instead of, say, 8.30 in the morning, um, we'd be able to get more of that public feedback then um, to inform the committee decision before it comes to the full board for a vote. Would it be more meaningful at the, the full board meeting? Claire? Um, I agree. I, I, I think going back to one meeting a month would be much more doable for working parents around the school board. Also, a 7 o'clock start time. I, was, I don't know where that came from, but I was delighted to see it because it's very hard to go from work to a 6 o'clock meeting and still have time to eat dinner for those of us who work. So, um, I, I think that would be really helpful for working parents who want to be on the school board. And could it just if I could ask just a question to that, do you, does anyone have a concern that the set meeting, we have frequently been uncomfortable with how late some of our meetings have yeah. gone. Yeah, I say we start at 7, we're just asking to be here until close, particularly we go to once a month, 
-hmm. We're definitely going to be here till 11 o'clock. This is why we moved to two meetings a month, is that one meeting a month was easily becoming four hours a meeting. We weren't getting out of places like Killington till 11 o'clock at night. Um, I would, if we're gonna, if we feel strongly about having one meeting a month, that it needs to start at six, because I'm not interested in staying for four hours in one meeting a month, starting at seven. Oh, Sherry, I think you know you Sam really is. <coughs> so I know that the reason why having committee meetings is as I said, we've had public request and participation, and for that to occur, it really has to be. A time. So mm -hmm. that was the my main yep. that made that recommendation. Uh, I support what Boyd said. I really like the idea of having an evening committee meeting that the community can be engaged in. I really, really like that idea. Um, working mom who would hate a 7 o'clock one. Um, but I, my hours are much different than many other people, so I understand that as well, being somebody who's... I'd love it if it started at 5. <laughs> but um, I know that that's unreasonable. But 7, if we're going to 1, me a month, no matter how well run the meeting is, mm -hmm. it's not gonna, we're not gonna be out at a reasonable time, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, if we made it any later, I mean, maybe 6.30 is a good halfway, but um, mm -hmm. but that we really stick to our agenda and that we have times in the agenda so we know when something's starting and when something's ending and when we get to that time, we move on. Mm -hmm. Any additional comments or questions about the stuff that we're tabling? So we we'll Will the meeting, I mean, I know it says here on page 5 that it would be 7 o'clock, the 23rd meeting, is that going to be at 6 o'clock? How is it warm? Can we, it's does anyone want to make a motion with regards to It's warm for 6 o'clock. It's, it's right? warm for 6 o'clock, I don't know. It's yeah, we have here people coming. One. Yeah, so we're not, we're, yeah. we're not making any changes, and I don't think we need to even discuss that because we're not changing the existing. So I don't have to adopt the one off of the calendar, Raina, we're good? No, we don't. Okay. I guess, could I just add one more thing to yes. this discussion? I think that the, the issue that happened with the idea of having two a month was that we would have shorter ones, but then it didn't happen. Then we just had two really long ones, almost as long as the single one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, if we do what, what Jen suggests and be really like, oh, it's time to go, goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, maybe we could do the, I wouldn't be against that, um, having two a month if we were really timely about it. Just a thought. I don't know the organization of the meetings. Yes. Any additional comments? I think if we're going to stick to timeliness, we might as well just do once a month for, <laughs> in the interest of people who are driving more than five or ten minutes down yeah. the road, yeah. um, and especially during the winter when there's bad weather. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be traveling after dark for upwards of an hour from here. I'm sticking to one a month. And any feeling on the board with regards to location to meetings? And we should rotate more than we do. We have a lot of meetings here. Okay. We need to get up to other schools. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll offer the contrary, and that is that I mean I, I understand the, it's important to visit the member schools, but having a constant rotation moves people all over this district in all kinds of weather, at all kinds, all times of night. So I would I would not advocate for maintaining the schedule we've had. I think it's there should be some visitation, but it's too much driving. But then again, you're splitting that driving responsibility throughout the entire committee, and, or the entire board. And in it's not the same people always traveling to travel the, the long distances. Yeah, and getting public input is really important. And so that makes it more amenable if we're Point of order, what are we on the agenda? We are um, discussing A through F, if anyone had any discussion on matters. On four that's on the t uh, floor to be tabled? And then Jennifer asked if we should discuss a few things. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to finish my statement, and that yes. is that it, it does um, further engage public from outside communities other than just Woodstock, because it makes it more convenient for those con those communities to um, uh, participate and have their voices heard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I, I sort of concur with Bob on this because um, you know it's a balance between that getting the voice of the people in all of the towns and. Um, our time is really is stretched very thin. So um, the thing is, this is the feeder school for all our kids from all the towns. So it seems to me to make sense that we sort of back and forth every other, you know, I, I think that's a, a, a good trade-off to balance all the issues. 
gives us a lot of empathy into um, what Just the students are going through. I mean, you sorry. have to recognize to speak. Sorry. If it, sorry. Rookie. <laughs> I'll come back to you, and then everyone gets a chance to speak on any issue, and then we can come back to you okay. after. Um, Jim. We're having our meeting. The next meeting is in two weeks. We've tabled this. Yep. I agree with Ben. I also agree with Pam. Uh, Pat, I'm sorry. Jen. Jen. Jen down at the other end. This is a perfect example. We've already tabled it. We should move on okay. and go from there. And we can give some suggestions to you okay. through an email. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we clarify the location yeah. of the next meeting? The next meeting will be at, so where was it more? We have the old schedule. The March 23rd, 6 p.m. March 23rd is for no. the WCSU. No, that's, the, that's the change schedule. March 23rd at Woodstock Central Supervisory Union. Yeah. Instead of being a committee meeting, it will be. Well, it's really hard to read this thing. I don't know who did it. The adoptive schedule shows the 23rd at Reading. We're going to Reading. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. March 23rd. But we have the auditor coming, and I don't think the auditor is not planned, is not planning on going to Reading. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't think, I mean, I think that, that meeting should be either here or at the yeah. WCSU because we have people, you know, this auditor we're paying to come. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. think we want to create extra so driving. Come, the someone. following meeting, April 6th, is here, so you could swap those. So yeah. moved. Second. 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 Table this discussion. Yeah. Okay. Next is to discuss and adopt a code of ethics. There is an attached page on the document, um, packet page eight. And then you need to sign. I'm sorry. You need the code of ethics signed. If the board so chooses to adopt them. Yes, Jim. I vote. I run for office in the town of Killington. I just filled out, and you just filled out something. It's a certificate of election of school director. I already took an oath, an oath here that says that I certify that at the WC, whatever it is, school district annual meeting, of qualified that I, James Half, was elected. I, James Half, do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of school director within and for said town, and will there in due equal right and justice for all men in the best of my judgment. I get that we are now a district, a uni unified district, but some of these folks that keep on talking like we're all one. I mean, I think Pamela and I are a perfect example that Barnard was trying to come in to this district and I was on the policy meeting with her. We each represent our towns and we had some discussions and some were heated, correct? But we work together for something. You folks, have, you're asking me to sign something here. I already signed for the people in the town of Killington my oath. I will not sign this because this will go against my oath that I signed to the voters that I, that I stood up there for to get their vote. I want to add to that that we also already have a policy, a code of conduct that is very redundant with this. So between our oaths, um, and our code of conduct, uh, the Vermont School Board Association is not like a legally binding, it's an association. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I mean, I will, I will sign this, but it doesn't seem necessary to me. Jennifer, did you have a Yeah, I was just, gonna, Raina, is this, I know that, I mean, we've signed things in the past. Is this, is this ordinarily signed by it all board members? before the board every year. Yeah. I've never signed it. It, it is a USBA <laughs> recommendation. It's a VSBA recommendation under their reorganizational list. Mm -hmm. And does um, the the policy that you're referencing, Pamela, mm -hmm. that just applies to us? I mean, we don't we don't we don't accept. I mean, we haven't signed it or anything, but it applies to all school board members. The policy that I'm referencing is one that we passed. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah. Just okay. Jim, do you have another question? 
I've never signed this before. I just won't okay. sign it again. She said it was on the list of the reorganized one. Yeah, we, I've never it signed was presented it. to us well, last year at the same it. meeting. We were all asked to sign it by page. Yeah. Are we are we required to? Like I am not aware that we're legally required to sign it. I mean I think you know, the question would be would signing it send an additional um, you know, message of um, you know, respect to not only our board members but to our communities and to the administration and um, to all those people who we who we serve and speak to. Yeah. These are all things I plan on doing, and I think that is basic, so I don't have any problem with signing it. I mean, these are all things I think we can all agree that we should be doing mm -hmm. as a board. Mm -hmm. I have no problem signing it. Plan C. I think it's pretty perfect. standard to have a code of conduct signed by board members at in organizations. I know, for example, if the board members at Mouse County Hospital all sign a code of conduct, I think that that is mm -hmm. standard issue when you're on a board um, and it's definitely part of the Vermont School Board Association recommendations, part of the National School Board Association recommendations. I think, again, it's just about being a professional organization and it's what expect, it's expected of, of boards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I see this as a best practice. I do fundraising, which there's codes of ethics that you, the professional associations also recommend and it's, you know, it's, a, it's something you can hold up and say, you know, we hold ourselves to a higher standard. That's how I see it. Yes, Pam. I would just ask Pam, the, our board pass policy, does it cover all of the content that's in here, like not receive anything of value by contract or otherwise in the school district? I mean, uh, there's pretty specific provisions <coughs> are sort of exemplary of best practice. Does our policy incorporate a lot? Uh, it's long. I have it open. I mean, I'm not going to read it right now, obviously, but. Um, yeah, it covers that sort of honesty. Yeah, it covers a lot of the same thing. There's a lot of crossover. Well, I just, you know, I just, I'm not sure that this redundancy is going to um, you know, put anybody <clears throat> you know, in a compromised position. You know, so historically, this is something that we've done. I think it's <coughs> probably, um, you know, something that we should consider continuing to do. I would ask anyone that's willing to sign it, <coughs> to sign it and submit it to Raina, please. Should we pull it from our packet? Or it I don't, should I don't, be. Um, it's in the packet if you have it. I just did a digital. I didn't grab it. Thank you. I got it. I'm good. Sorry, Gabby. I was going to say, I can make four copies of it. I'll leave one. Okay. Thank you. 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 Any further discussion on this? Okay. Moving on. Um, the adoption of Robert's Rules of Order. So um, moved. Okay. Any discussion? Should we go over them for new board members or even? We want to be added. Right. Right. Just, <laughs> I would uh, recommend. There's. I would recommend. I recommend you read. Everyone read them. Um, and if there's any questions about them or how we're applying them, perhaps bring them forward to the next board meeting. Is that sounds good? Does that seem fair to everybody? Yep. Okay. Um, any further discussion on Robert's Rules of Order? And I, I request that we have all the same copies sent out via email so that we're all reading the same. It's version. online, but we don't own it. Which version? Because it's there's multiple online. versions. Online. I think. There's, there's multiple the, versions. You have to click notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read Can I take out a version and then can we send it all yeah, to everybody? Find the link, I, think. I will find a happy version and we Appreciate will it. make sure that it gets sent to everybody so everyone's reading the same version. Is that, does that work? Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of adopting Robert's Rules of Order, the motion to adopt Robert's Rules of Order? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The next is to designate the VSVA voting. Motion to approve. Second and second. Um, you want to read it out to the people so we do Yeah, so we need a person appointed for this particular action. A voting delegate for the statewide health insurance to the first meeting, uh, at the first meeting we're supposed to do this, so. This what, what exactly is this? We're naming a board member to be this person? 
on page nine of your packet? Yeah, no, I see that. It's just a voting delegate, Jennifer. Doesn't mean it has to be a board member. I don't know that it has to be a board member, but it has to be a voting delegate from the SU school and the school district. Do we know who our person was last year? It's new this year. Oh, it's new. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Jim? I think we're just approving that we accept this and we can come back and find out who's going to be the delegate at a later date. And probably, yeah, I, I can discuss it with Mary Beth and see who she thinks is, um, you know, in what, from what group of people the appropriate It says person. delegate by April 1st. Okay. Yeah. If we could also find out when that annual meeting is, that might help the delegate decide. Decide whether or not they want to be available for that. Any other discussion on the VSBA voting? Mm -hmm. And the agenda would be your finance agenda. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, an update um, from the Finance Committee because we did meet uh, last Wednesday with the auditor. Um, it was my first time meeting the auditor. Uh, he's, he's been employed by our, by our district for several years, but it was my first time meeting him. Um, and uh, we had um, a couple, couple of board, we had a finance committee there, a couple of other board members came, and um, he presented us essentially with the first round of findings. We are going, he's going to make the full presentation to the board uh, two weeks from tonight on the 23rd. Um, essentially, uh, as was stated before, 2018 was in fact, uh, completed but not signed off on approximately 15 months ago. Um, and it is my understanding that um, it must be completed but not necessarily signed off on before the 31st of March. So that was done as was required by statute, but it wasn't all the answer, all the questions were not answered. When an auditor does the audit, they do it, but then they give questions back and the questions were not all answered by the finance department. So uh, that 18 budget, that 18 audit is now complete and signed off on. The 2019 audit will be complete by the 16th, so a week from today, um, and then will be presented to all of us um, on the 23rd. It is anticipated, um, and Ron will go through in great detail with all of us um, exactly how this happened. We ran surpluses through 2017, and we had no problems with 2018. So um, it, it is highly unusual for any, uh, I'm going to call it school in this district, but it's really district in this SU, to have had any deficits. So um, but there, were, uh, there were misses um, by the finance department, and we will work to fix those. There is a, there is a potential um, gap, deficit for 2000. 19, um, anywhere between, different numbers have been given, but um, the, what Ron said, the auditor, was between 200,000 and 700,000. Um, my takeaway um, from that meeting, and it was an over three hour meeting, so it was a long meeting, um, was it is a problem, but it is an absolutely fixable problem. And we have, 15 months in which to fix it um, so that we do not have to take for, carry forward any deficit we have in 19 and any deficit we are going to have in 20 and he'll be able to give us preliminary numbers on any deficit in 20 at that 23rd meeting we can fix this and um, the first step in doing that is freezing non-essential spending and um, that was his recommendation to do um, immediately and um, we are, uh, we, uh, the um, administrative team has been given this directive right now. And um, so it, I, I want you all to know that I feel very strongly, I, I have a lot of confidence in the auditor, um, and I really feel like we do have a problem. This is a fixable problem, and um, we will have a, we'll have a really clear plan going forward when um, we meet on the 23rd. 
and um, when the auditor completes his work and continues, the, the 19 will be done in the 16th, the 20 will be a uh, process of completion through the spring. Um, I will, uh, I'm, I'm at this point um, very cognizant of the finance department's time in needing to put the work <coughs> into getting the uh, uh, 20 audit done. And so I don't want to put a lot of extra um, strain on them, but if uh, there is no plan at this point to meet with the auditor prior to the 23rd um, as a finance committee, I'll let you know if, if that changes. But um, anyway, that's that's where we are. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask me? I Jim. will certainly um, try and keep you um, up to date, you know, as, as much as I can. Does have any so questions? Jennifer, I just want to um, clarify because I'm being asked from press right now on the 2018 um, audit. Isn't it true that we were told while we were doing the 2020 budget that it was done? And then, That's my recollection. And then when we started to work on the 2021 budget in the Finance Committee, we were told that the 2018 uh, audit was not done. And then when we met on March 4th with the auditor, that is the only time we found out that the audit was actually a um, a draft not signed off over 15 months ago. It's my reflection. Thank yes. you. Then the last, the other thing that I have is, is that, you know, we sit here and I sat in the same fine, I sat in the same finance meeting with the auditor. This, this district has allowed the auditor to personally speak to me Ron Smith, because he is a friend of mine, okay? Um, when we talk about is is easily ready to fix, his recommendations are number one, we just put a freeze on all non-essential budgets, uh, spending. Number two, they're looking for some cuts wherever. And number three, we're going to be hoping for some excess from some place. I mean, anyone can say it's easy to do, but I mean, this is this is not going to be easy. I'm sorry, Jim. I did not. I don't know if I just used that word easy. I did okay. not mean to use that word easy. Okay. I meant to use. I meant to give you all the impression this can be done. It won't be easy. This is hard work, but it is fixable. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask a question? Anna. Um, uh, when you were told that the audit was done and then it oh, wasn't sorry. done and then it was done. I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm really sorry. I'm, really sorry. I, no, I, I'm sorry. I'm done answering any <laughs> questions. Sorry. Just wait yeah. until March 23rd. Yeah. Go ahead, Anna. Can I ask you a question about where the Afterwards. information was coming from? From the auditor. Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah, um, I don't know if this can be answered now, but just um, reflecting back on comments from the public earlier and just thinking forward on the auditor and the results and maybe the history of the how and the why and when all of this information comes forward, is this information um, that's going to be available at finance committee meetings? Is this going to be information this that's going to be available to on March 23rd to the full yeah, board? To the full board. Session. Okay. Thank you. Full board yeah, we don't allow public anymore at this okay. point. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a really brief question. <laughs> nope. We don't. No, we're not going to do that right now. Well, just no. No, we don't. We don't. Okay. Um, any other questions about finance? Tell them how to sit back. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay. Um, on the agenda number five, board purpose. Claire? Sure. I was just asked to read the mission statement of the district and talk about one of the things about quick good credit. Just to remind us why we're all here. Can you speak up? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hear the mission statement, um, which is from 2012. Um, it's kind of old now. Windsor Central Supervisory Union's mission is based on the four principles of cohesiveness, equity, high academic standards, and professional practice. These principles will guide the support and leadership WCSU will provide to the individual school districts that constitute the supervisory union. The leadership provided by WCSU will be focused on the intellectual, social, emotional, and physical development of students within the WCSU schools from kindergarten through high school 
so that students will be prepared to achieve productive and fulfilling lives. And that was adopted by the board on November 12, 2012. Okay. And then um, just I chose one of the um, portrait of a graduate um, components. So Windsor Central graduate exhibits skillful communication, effectively communicates in both digital and face-to-face -face environments, communicates for a range of purposes and with a variety of audiences, articulates thoughts and ideas through a variety of modalities, cultivates the ability to listen and values alternative perspectives, demonstrates strong digital citizen skills as both a producer and a consumer. And I think as a board, we can think of ourselves as individuals who should be modeling, um, modeling those things. Okay. Thank you. Um, we do not have any student board representatives here this evening, I'm seeing. Okay. Um, Allison, here. Allison, did you want Oh, were you here, Allison? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I'm just here as a member of the public. We haven't met recently because of the vacations and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, before the recent election, we had, or we helped with a voter registration drive. So I'm forgetting the exact number, but there were, I think, over 30 students that um, registered to vote through our drive. And there were more that were already registered through getting their licenses at the DMV. And we had a lot of juniors and seniors who went to vote in the presidential primary last week. So that's, I guess, the student voice update. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Superintendent's report. Sure, so the first thing um, to review is the enrollment. Um, you can see at the bottom, there's a link now to the district and school enro enrollment data by town. So that was a request from the last meeting. If you click on that link, it is a spreadsheet that really breaks it down by grade and by town. So that information has been clarified. Um, legislative updates. Um, something that we all should be looking into is the pupil waiting study. So this is a new look at how it's determination on how each student is weighted. We all know that one student isn't one weight. And so based on the new guidelines that are being reviewed, it ha could have significant impact on this district. It's a complicated, it's not a long document, but really, really looks at, at the number of ELL students you have, what have the population of freedom reduced lunch, census data information. So this is something that could significantly impact our number of students that counted per district, district. So we really should keep an eye on that. That's gonna have some budgetary impact for us in the long range. Uh, Mary Beth did go up to uh, Montpelier and testify to the legislature on school construction. Um, the, there's a link there to the PowerPoint that was done by Jeff Francis from the VSA and David Epstein from uh, Truex Collins <laughs> Architecture. Um, I think if you've been reviewing and keeping current with the public, many schools are in a similar situation with us in terms of their building infrastructure and the challenges they're facing. Um, and this is another unfunded, um, kind of, not mandate by the state, but an unfunded component of the state in terms of how do we support districts who are looking for um, new bills or updating their current facilities. So again, it's important that we be current on what's happening. Um, in regards to COVID-19, um, so my, part of my role as Director of Instructional Support Services is around emergency management systems. We're developing, in a, uh, currently we have an emergency operations plan that we're drafting. It should be done within the next month for review. But Mary Beth has been meeting with Claire and Jamie Sudal, who's our school nurse leader from West, looking at our response, coming current on um, information that's changing daily. This morning I met with the Woodstock Emergency uh, the Emergency Organizational Committee around what they're doing and supporting each other's work. Um, I know at the high school today and middle school, they've begun organizing around what ifs and making sure that we have curriculum available to students and the, the need that we would have to cancel school for a period of time. We're looking at the, we do have a one-to-one -one, um, initiative where we're making sure the students still have that capacity to access academics from home is something that we're working on. We're also looking at making sure that students who have received free and juice lunch would still have access to food. So there's lots of conversations. Um, I receive um, updates daily from uh, Monica Hutt from uh, the Agency of Health at the state. So we're, we're getting pretty current information and we're trying to respond accordingly. Um, as well as hygiene and making sure that our Purell is everywhere. But we've got a lot of teams having that conversation. So, um, and ultimately, we um, I'm the I'm the um, 
consulting position for the district. So that's why I've been involved. So I haven't been involved as my in my role as the board, but as the consulting position for the district. And I've been on the phone with the Agency of Education and the Vermont Department of Health. Um, and it will ultimately be up to the Department of Health if we need to shut schools down. Okay, that's not our call. Um, that will be up to the Department of Health um, if we end up having some COVID-19 in our area and it's deemed necessary to do that. But I asked Mary Beth to make sure that we have to work with the IT team to make sure that we have the capacity to educate the students remotely um, if and when that, that occurs. So lots of fronts were addressing that issue and keeping it pretty current on that. Piece. There have been a couple districts in Vermont that have already. There was two that were in Williston today, mm -hmm. and that was a result of a faculty member be going to New York and being exposed and coming back. And so I'm not sure what the decision was for tomorrow, but that was for closed tomorrow. Closed tomorrow as well. Okay. Current, current yes. whatever that school district is right. called as well. I'm really heartened to hear all of the planning that's going on. Um, I was just thinking that um, where I work at UVM, the provost sent a letter to everybody saying these are the measures we're taking, these, this is the planning that should be going on for you know faculty, students, everybody. And I think it might be helpful for, because I, I was wondering, I wonder what yeah, the planning is going on. Yeah, it's been in the principal's on. newsletters. Yeah, it was in the principal's, it was well, in the read it for today, but newsletter. I guess I missed it. Okay. No, and Mary Beth sent one, one too. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, uh, right, Mary Beth did, but it didn't address it. the specifics of we're planning. This is what we're yeah. doing. And I didn't feel comforted yet by that, but this this I think it also good. was sent a week ago or something. Mm -hmm. So I mean before. Yeah, it's changing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so for my report, I've been working with the K-12 counseling team, looking at um, looking at the demands of the positions, looking at the kinds of work we're doing, coming up with um, recommendations we'll be presenting to the full board in June. Um, RAF is still working on interviews for the um, open IT position, multiple interviews, but finding people who are um, the credentials we need and willing to work at the salary we can offer is very challenging. He's still working on that position. He's also working hard with Sarah Cook to develop online registration systems with the goal of that happening within the central office that will make sure that um, it will reduce the amount of time in each of our administrative offices where that work's happening, as well as making sure that our data is more accurate. So that's what RAF had to report. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome. Um, moving on to the consent agenda, the approval of the minutes. Sorry, we also have to vote on the administration's recommendations regarding international travel. Um, that's oh, sorry, that's okay. Sorry, I thought that's okay. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I had a um, one on the uh, February 10th um, rain up on page 15. It's the third page of it. It says, um, uh, second to last paragraph discussion ensued regarding administration per pupil. It says ration here. It should be ratio. Where are we? Um, page 15 of the packet, it's the February 10th minutes, the third page of the minutes, mm -hmm. second to last paragraph, pupil ration. Okay. Should not okay. be rationed, that should be ratio. Not rationed, ratio. Um, and then um, on the next one, the February 24th minutes, um, in response to um, Julie's comment, comments in public session, do we traditionally attach things, Raina, to? No, I was hoping you would ask that question. Okay. So I just, the guidelines of what minutes are, minutes are a record of your action. It is not a verbatim of who said what at the meeting. So asking to include all of this stuff, um, the Secretary of State cautions against that greatly, especially you know, so-and-so made a public comment about why their water bill was too high and your tax, you know, they really caution against that stuff. Very, you can say public comment was heard or, um, and you're not required to take minutes in an executive session and the purpose of your executive session is because it is information that is not public. So to come out and write in minutes what you discussed in executive session and all of the reasons behind it defeats the purpose of an executive session, in my opinion. 
the, the directive in the past has been anything that is distributed at a meeting goes into the matter of record on my end of maintaining your records. We are not required to post them. So do you keep copies of what? I keep copies in a in the official binders of your records. Okay. Yes. If you would like to post them online, that's a possibility. I, I just wanted to know. Be incorporated directly into your minutes. That is not the purpose of minutes. Thank you. Um, you know, in that vein, does anyone have any you know comments or feelings about a system of recording additional detail? You know, now that we have you know Raina's information about what, you know what we are told we have to do and what we should do, you know, we have the television um, you know recordings, but there have been some. You know, questions I think in the past from the public about you know voice recordings of the meetings, so some of these details don't get lost in the shuffle. I don't know if that's something going forward we need to think about, but most certainly if you guys have some ideas about that, um, well, like a, a tape or, or a recording. I do link to those recordings online, so people can watch the so they're recordings. Easy. They're easy for people to find. That should probably be sufficient. Okay. Any other comments about the consent agenda? All in favor of approving the consent agenda? Aye. Uh, Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Passes. Next on the agenda is the application to, for the preliminary approval. Um, Sherry? So Mary Beth, is, if you look at the document, Mary Beth has added the recommendations of um, on the first page, first full paragraph, it says six or seven, two grades 11. So that was included. Then on page three, four through the application, uh, page 22, under enrollment projections, second paragraph, says the proposed new building is planned for an enrollment capacity of 700 students and is currently being designed to serve students in grades six through 12, although a final board vote on this configuration configuration has not yet occurred. So those are the two um, changes that were requested and were made by Mary Beth. Okay. So we need to vote on that. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? So I'll make the motion to accept. Second. Any further discussion? Jim? I still do not believe that this board has had the full discussion on page 20 that it reads in the second paragraph, given the magnitude of structural operating of challenges facing the building, bond ending and narrative issues is no longer a viable solution and does not make good economic sense. We have never had this vote. We have not had all the material in front of us. There is a document from Johnson Controls that will show that it will take care of the noise in the rooms, it will take care of the heat, it will take care of the HVAC, it will take care of most of these problems here at zero net cost because they will switch everything out. We have not spoken about that yet. So um, I would be fine moving the application, but some of this stuff has to come off. I mean, we have not, as a board, had a vote saying this. We've been told we said it, but we have not. So, you know, so your question is, that the Band-aiding versus, you know, versus, um, you know, new build versus remodeling. I, mean, I, I don't know how you feel is the best way for us to try to. I think paragraph that two gym. should not. I mean, it talks about an HVAC system that's outdated. An HVAC system is very easily to be repaired and sent to be fixed. We actually have a report. I believe our grounds. Um, Joe Riglio has it actually, and it's never been presented to this full board. I think Ben, when I mentioned it the last time, was kind of shocked that there was one when I said it. Right. Um, a couple points. One, I agree with Jim. I think that we need to move this forward anyway. We can have a bigger discussion later on. Um, and I would just point out that the HVAC you mentioned, it, that Jim was mentioning, is only one piece of that, that paragraph. It talks about ADA compliance, fire safety, septic system, HVAC. Security and structural codes. And structural codes have nothing to do with the HVAC system either. Yeah. So, 
I, I hear what you're saying, and Jim's not wrong with the Johnson Controls thing. There was a couple of reasons why that got delayed. Uh, part of it was because Barnard was not part of the merged district, and as a legal entity, it would be easier if Barnard was in it. So I think Buildings and Grounds Committee can probably get that information forward, whether or not we move forward with any kind of bond or not. Um, so we can probably plan to have Joe maybe present on that topic a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't feel like it's any cause to stop this document from being put forward, so you can move forward with this part of the process. Pamela? Um, I agree with what Jim said. I think that, that that sentence is the opinion. It is an opinion, and it's the opinion of, of some people. Um, it's not the opinion of every person on this board, and, and like he said, it's never been voted on, so I don't think an assertion, it's, it's stated as a matter of fact, um, and I don't think that should be there. I, f I furthermore do not uh, think that the, the improvement to this, to the section on enrollment, you know, we also never, never discussed as a full board, um, enrollment projections and enrollment ideas that was, uh, decided upon, um, I guess by the committee, but it's, it's moving forward without a full board discussion. And it's in here still, even though it has this sort of caveat, maybe it'll change. But I'm not really comfortable with that either. But I will not vote for this. Yes, Claire. I think you could probably eliminate those two sentences that people are not comfortable with. Um, I just don't know that they are necessary mm -hmm. in the document. Um, and then um, pen. Is there a motion? I, it's a, to amend. It's a, if people like the idea, like they can. Second. Okay, I make, I make a motion to amend that to mm -hmm. strike those two sentences that people have some discomfort with. Second. Can I believe I'm the one that made the motion in the beginning, and what is the ruling on that, Raina? Uh, I would have to accept it. To accept, and that's still open. Uh, can I? Sorry, I just wanted to add. I thought that the issue with those sentences had to do with the, I don't know if it was a statue or what, but coming down from the state, the application was very specific on what you could be, you have to show that you, you can't have to show, exactly. So I think that's mm -hmm. the reason these that sentences is. were in here. I'm not saying that they should or shouldn't be in here, but there was a purpose <coughs> for having those sentences in here. And I don't have that application in front of me, so I can't. No. <laughs> Sherry, but does can anybody can else remember that? Because oh, Sherry, can you speak to yeah. those sentences being modified? No, I didn't. You didn't have anything to do with that. Sorry. Mary Beth had it in front of her at our last meeting. So, so I don't know that you can strike them, is what I'm saying, I without think. having that. Maybe we should just wait till Mary Beth. And just, just as I pointed out last time, this is a preliminary application. Once you get the results back from the state, you still modify the plan. It's nothing set in stone. This is just to get a preliminary approval of whether we can even move forward with this part of the process. It has nothing to do with any kind of approval on a project or anything. It's to find out from the state's opinion whether we would be approved to not carry the burden of, of that excess cost that, that we're all worried about. So again, certain things I just I don't find relevant. I think this meets all the criteria for the document the state's requesting. Um, and again, we're not approving any project here whatsoever. We, that's a whole separate conversation. I think Claire's solution is a good one. And Melina's um, point I do remember. Um, but I think striking that sentence there, given the magnitude, um, this, that paragraph ends with talking about expensive replacement costs. It's pretty much saying almost the same thing, but not quite as concretely. So I think it's still um, arguably fulfilling that piece that Elena reminded us of. Anyone other than Jim? Jim? Oh, no, Bob, I'm sorry. Um, my concern would be, I mean, this this is, we paid good money for, for a factual review of this building and so you know, this is the opinion of the expert that we hired if we don't if we don't include that then it doesn't go on to the state in terms of the application correct that be correct Bryce? if it doesn't if we don't include it if we don't include a, the sort of summary sentence of the analysis <coughs> by those who did the you know the facility baseline study then it doesn't get passed on for purposes of the application but they'll have the analysis will they not well, that this is what that analysis 
Yes. That's why I list this uh, engineers and stuff. Jim. So, Bob, you're referring back to a pamphlet that is about a year and a half or two years old, and on the first page of it, it states that it was all visual. It says if you want to go further up talking about the air quality in the building, this is only visual. If you want to check to make sure, please bring in the proper engineering firm to correct. I don't know how somebody goes into a building and visually, oh, I couldn't do that because that's not visual, that's smelling. I don't know how you fit visually see, and that's what's been getting me about this report that we have. If anyone reads the report from first page to last page, it says in the beginning, all of this is visual. That's it. So I agree with Claire that this should be resent back for different changes. Since it will be a change in wording, we need to give it back to the person that's actually writing it and bring it back to us on March 23rd. I will make that motion to change, and whoever second my motion then. Second. Yeah, it's fine. Any additional discussion? I guess I'll only add that my point in bringing up the state application is that if you've ever submitted anything to the state and if it's time sensitive, if, you, if, if that is really a sticky point, then they're going to send it back and then we're just going to be back at zero. So if it needs to go back for rewriting, fine, but let's just make sure that it's not going to cost time if time is really an issue. We were told at the last meeting that they do not even have anybody there to accept this document okay. yet. Is there any way we can um, amend the motion to bring this to Mary Beth with the specific request that we have, and if she agrees to do them? That is my amended motion. So that is second. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion on the table. Aye. 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 All those opposed. Nay. Nay. I think people have to say louder. Who's your count? 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 I have a show of hands. All those in favor of the motion on the table. Okay. All those opposed. Okay. Let us have it. Yep, six to seven. Just the chair is in Oh, and you can take my vote out. No, the chair would vote if it was a tie, and it was a tie, 6-6. Robert's rule, I think. Um, moving on to item 11, foreign travel and coronavirus. So you'll see in your packet there were two letters sent out. There was a trip to Italy, and there was a trip to Spain and France. Um, you'll see that the letters that were sent out to the parents um, around a recommendation to um, discontinue these trips. Um, it's the board who approves international travel, so that's why it's come back to the board to support um, that we will not send the students in to Italy and to Spain and France. When were they scheduled? Um, April around 20. April vacation. Yeah, April 11th to so the 21st. Is there any plan to, are they just canceling the trips altogether, or is there a next year. Yeah, this, I know the Italy students are thinking about next year. A number of those kids, students are graduating, yeah, so that's the challenge. So we need a, to vote on this to approve these recommendations. Right. Okay. So can I have a motion? So moved. Go ahead. Second. Okay. And then the discussion. Any other discussion? That's good. Um, and so uh, yes. So they are. And this, the Spain. France trip is an annual or biannual bi -annual. event, and so that would be considered for a year after. I'm not sure what they're thinking right yeah. now. It's been challenging for families yeah, who have put the money because it's a pandemic. It's not covered by insurance. So there's a lot of challenge. I mean, Garen, do you want to speak to it in a little more detail than I Yeah, we're, we're continuing to um, work with our travel providers as well as the insurance company to know what our options are. Uh, Sarah Allen hosted a meeting, um, what meeting was that on? Thursday of last week? Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday of last week, and putting out the options to parents about possibility for a postponement, but also what does cancellation mean. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow night for students going to the France and, and um, Spain trips as well. So we're in that process, um, working with companies to see how best to mitigate the financial impact, but really it's a safety concern. We can't see supporting going on these trips at this time. Thank you for your work. Thanks. 
I know that the Italy group has been planning this for years. So this is really just Any other questions or discussion the motion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 All those opposed? So there was a letter from you know, Dorothy Byrne who has been such a great supporter of our school for many different um, opportunities that we offer our students. So this was a letter that offered some financial support. And so um, do you want to? So I'd be happy to speak to this. It's my fault that it's coming to you this late and at this awkward time um, being new to getting grants. So she had kindly, um, per our request, offered us $15,000 to mitigate student costs by about 710. Um, and so this comes to you normally if we were actually planning on traveling we'd ask you for approval and go on from there but where we are now um, we are in limbo we do not know if we're going to postpone or not we need to have a certain number of students um, I hopefully will know that by Friday um, and move on from there but so this money unfortunately I apologize for incorrectly doing this it had been given to us it has been paid um, we will be reimbursed some of the money from the tour company that we are working with. Um, so we would like your recommendation on how to move forward with what to do with this money, depending on our circumstances, I think. Well, I think we need to approach the Byrne Foundation. Um, it's really up to them. They made, um, and I receive annual support from them for the Summer So program. So I think we need to approach the Byrne Foundation and see how they want us to proceed. They're the ones who gave us the money, and so just how they propose we execute it and then we can come back to the board once that has so been moved on Sherry's recommendation yeah. yeah thank you Sarah second and thank you for all your work I mean it was hours and hours and hours. it just can't even count the number of hours so, and so. providing students with the opportunity has been amazing any um, other discussion on the motion on the table no. all those in favor of the motion aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed Motion to adjourn. We had an executive, no, executive, executive, session. Session. executive, executive session. session. Motion to go into an executive session. Pardon me. What are we going in for? Our personnel.